In a world where music transcends boundaries, one artist stood tall, his melodies echoing the heartbeat of a nation. Welcome to the untold story of Lucky Dube, a legend whose music became a beacon of hope in the face of adversity. Born on August 3rd, 1964, in Ermelo, Transvaal, Lucky Dube's journey began amidst the turbulent landscape of apartheid South Africa. I was born uh, in a, a small town in the eastern Transvaal called Ermelo. So the language we spoke at home was Zulu language, which I think uh, most of you do know something about. It's, uh, this town is in the eastern Transvaal called Emelo. It's about 200 k's from Swaziland. So I was born there and uh, I went to school there until I was doing standard uh, four. And then after that, I moved to another town called Staniton, also in the Transvaal. And uh, after there, I, I, I was in Staniton until I did my standard eight. After that, I went to Newcastle. That is Newcastle. It's situated in Natal, about uh, 300 k's from Johannesburg, which is where I met Richard, my producer. Raised by his mother and grandmother, he found solace in music, his soul stirred by the rhythms of his homeland. As a young man, Dube's talent blossomed. From humble beginnings as a gardener, he soared to the heights of stardom, driven by a passion to create and inspire. Dube worked as a gardener in his younger years but later decided to go to school in order to improve his economic prospects. There he joined a choir and with some friends, formed his first musical ensemble, the Skyway Band. Well, I started playing music when I was about eight years old, but then I was just uh, singing in local bands where I lived, but professionally I started in 1979. While at school, he discovered the Rastafari movement. At the age of 18, Dube joined his cousin's band, the Love Brothers, playing Zulu pop music known as Embakanga. I met my uh, producer, who, the guy who is my producer now, Richard Siluma. I met him, he was with a band uh, called the Love Brothers. So they were playing a uh, um, bakanga kind of music, which was very popular kind of music back home. Every band used to play that kind of music. And so when I joined uh, this band, I started by playing drums and doing backing vocals and things like that. It's only in 1982 that I recorded uh, my, my, my own solo album. The band signed with Teal Record Company and recorded the album Lucky Dube and the Super Soul, and Dube began to learn English. My first album that I recorded was called Gudala uh, Ngungenga, which was uh, in the Mpakanga kind of music, that's a Zulu soul music. In 1986, together with his cousin Richard Siluma, Dube released the Afrikaans album Decap Sedans, followed by the EP Help My Crap the same year under the name Um Hansi. On the release of his fifth album, Dave Siegel, who became Dube's sound engineer, encouraged him to drop the super soul element of the name. All subsequent albums were recorded as Lucky Dube. Around this time, the singer noticed that fans were responding positively to some reggae songs he played during concerts. Any upcoming band was, was doing the same kind of music. Like when you live in Jamaica, you know reggae music being the only kind of music that you can play. So it happened to me in that way. Back home, I played in Bakranga, but after some time, uh, in 1984, this kind of music became somewhat, uh, uh, people get bored because of this music, because every band was playing it, everyone was playing this kind of music, and so people turned not to, to like it anymore. So now, even if I had a message that I wanted to 
sent through to people. It, it wouldn't come through properly because people didn't like it. And so I thought I should try and sing something fresh, something that the people don't know about, something that will come to them as something new that will make them listen to me. And so it was only possible through reggae because no one was doing reggae in South Africa before I started. Drawing inspiration from Jimmy Cliff and Peter Tosh, he felt the socio-political messages associated with Jamaican reggae were relevant to a South African audience in an institutionally racist society. He decided to try the new musical genre and in 1984 released the mini-album Rastas Never Die. The record sold poorly, around 4,000 units, in comparison to the 30,000 units his MBA Kanga records would sell. Keen to suppress anti-apartheid activism, the regime banned the album in 1985 because of its critical lyrics, such as in the song War and Crime. The first album I made in, in reggae was called uh, Rustus Never Died. This one was banned uh, because they said I'm pro promoting Rastafarianism, which they actually don't like, I mean, back home there. And so the, there's a black radio station called Radio Zulu and another one, Radio Tswana, Peri and all. Those are the radio stations really that play a lot of reggae music. They've got uh, reggae programs on their stations and uh, they are the stations that play reggae music. Dubé was not discouraged, however, and continued to perform the reggae tracks live and wrote and produced a second reggae album, Think About the Children, in 1985. It achieved platinum sales status and established Duba as a popular reggae artist in South Africa, in addition to attracting attention outside his homeland. Beyond the stage, Lucky Dube was a champion for justice, using his platform to advocate for racial equality and social change. His tragic passing in 2007 shook the world, but his legacy endures, a testament to the power of music to heal and inspire. On 18th of October 2007, Lucky Jube was killed by armed robbers in Rosettenville, a Johannesburg suburb, shortly after dropping two of his seven children off at their uncle's house. <laughs> 